Why is Mary crying? Written by Jack T. Chick. Poor Mary, her heart is broken by the very ones who love her. How can this be? Mary is honored and loved worldwide by the faithful, but they have not done what she asked them to do. Mary was an example to people everywhere. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And, behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. <gasps> but I am a virgin. Mary knew her life would be in danger. She would be accused of adultery, and could be stoned to death under Jewish law. But Mary was willing to obey God at any cost. She said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Soon the baby was born, and Mary did something surprising. In Luke 1, 46 and 47, Mary had already admitted that she needed a Savior. So in obedience, she brought her sin offering of two turtle doves to the temple, like all Jewish mothers. The scriptures say, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Once again, Mary obeyed God's word. That same day, God revealed this truth to Mary by a man named Simeon. He gave her this prophecy. Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through their own, own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. He was right, but Mary never thought it would happen like this. She saw her son crucified, but Jesus came to this earth as the Lamb of God. He shed his precious blood as a sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, including her own. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Truly this was the Son of God. Mary's tears should have ended here, but... Little did she know her heart would be broken again in a way she never expected. Mary is embarrassed because the people are bowing down to statues of her. My Lord, I never asked them to do this. They should be bowing to you. One of God's Ten Commandments says this, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Mary would never be a part of this. Mary sheds tears because men call her the mother of God. When Christ created the universe, I was not there. The word of God says, speaking of Jesus, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Christ is divine. I'm only human. When Christ chose to put on humanity, I was the chosen vessel to bring him forth in the form of man. But Christ was God long before I was born. Mary weeps because men teach she was really sinless. If you speak about the Lord Jesus as being without sin, then you are correct. God says of Jesus on the cross that God made him, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. But of the rest of us born on this planet, the scriptures say, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Look to Jesus, not me. The scriptures say he did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Mary is crying for the deceived multitudes who look to her as a mediatrix and pray to her. There are not two mediators, only one. Read carefully what the scriptures say. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Beloved, you've been lied to. I'm not a mediatrix. Jesus loves you. You must trust in him. He's the only one we can go to as a mediator. If what you have read is true, and it certainly is, according to the word of God, then who is deceiving you? Surely God isn't. If Mary cannot intercede for you, if Mary can't answer your prayers, 
if Mary isn't the Queen of Heaven, if Mary is not presented as she is in the Bible, then is it possible that millions of people throughout the centuries are praying to someone who isn't at all who they think she is? God does not play tricks on people. Please read carefully the following pages. Where you will spend eternity hinges on it. Satan knew Jesus would leave heaven and be born of a virgin to become the savior and mediator between God and man. So he devised a wicked plan to confuse the people into putting their trust in a counterfeit virgin that Satan created. After Noah's flood, the survivors multiplied and built the great city of Babylon. Satan found his quote-unquote virgin, a beautiful witch <coughs> named Semiramis, and he used her to put untold millions into hell. Semiramis became the queen of Babylon and married Nimrod. Historically, he was called the husband of his mother. Satan used them both to create a satanic cult so powerful that it spread around the world and multitudes looked to Semiramis as their goddess mother. Semiramis and Nimrod came up with the idea of confessionals and celibacy for the priesthood. Nimrod was called by many names, including Moloch. Babies were sacrificed in his honor. When Nimrod was put to death, the people wept. Semiramis moved quickly to take advantage of the situation one of the numerous monuments of Babylon. Satan's phony virgin gave birth to another child and claimed that Nimrod had been reincarnated. The child was called Tammuz. He became the sun god, Baal. She became a goddess with many names such as Balti, the Madonna, the great goddess mother, queen of heaven, the mediatrix, the mother of mankind, Astarte, etc. As time went on, monuments of the goddess and her child appeared in many nations. Because when the people of Babylon were scattered to various parts of the earth, they took with them the worship of the divine mother and child. Satan had successfully set up his own deadly religion long before Jesus was born. The earth was in darkness. Here we have a uh, picture of how every different nation and every different religion ties back that has mother worship mother child worship ties back ultimately to Babylon so we Babylon with Semiramis and Tammuz who became what's known as Baal in China it's Shingmu in India it's Devaki and Krishna in Ephesus it was Diana in Egypt it was Isis and Horus in Greece it was Aphrodite the Mediatrix in Rome, it was Venus and Jupiter. In Israel, it was Ashtoreth and Baal. Even in Tibet, China, and Japan, the Jesuit missionaries were astonished to find the counterpart of Madonna and her child as devoutly worshipped as in Papal Rome itself. You can find this on page 20 of The Two Babylons by Hislop, published by Chick Publications. It's been recorded that even in Africa, the great mother and child received divine honors. Worldwide, the adoration was so strong among the pagans that they would not forsake their mother goddess. When Roman Catholicism came into existence around 300 AD, the leaders knew if they could adopt the worship of the goddess mother into their religious system, then countless pagans would convert to Catholicism. But who could replace the great mother of paganism? Mary, the mother of Jesus, was the only logical person. Little by little, the worship of the pagan goddess was transferred to Mary. The ancient Babylonian religion depicted the goddess mother as the only one who could control her son. And so the same satanic idea was incorporated into Catholicism. Jesus is angry, and only Mary can appease him. And so Catholics are afraid of the loving Savior, and they believe only Mary can get them into heaven. This angry Jesus is not the Jesus of the Bible who said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. The mother of God that Catholics worship is not the Mary of the Bible. Satan has successfully deceived them into worshiping his counterfeit goddess, the Queen of Heaven. In these last days, the key to pulling all the religions together is the worship of the satanic mother goddess. Almost a billion Muslims will join because the Virgin Mary was carefully placed in their holy book. 
the Quran. Even the New Ages refer to a mother-father God. Satanic posers will impersonate Mary in future apparitions of the Virgin worldwide, including communist countries, to bring the world under Satan's Antichrist. The devil knows his time is running out. Jesus is coming soon, and Satan is desperate. The Apostle Peter said of Jesus, Neither is there salvation in any of any other, for there is none for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. If I didn't believe that, I would be calling God's word a lie, and I would never do that. Beloved, Catholic families have been betrayed for centuries. Jesus Christ himself said, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. In thy house. To learn more, more about the true doctrines of the Catholic Church, see Understanding Roman Catholicism by Rick Jones from Chick Publications. The Bible says there's only one way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Nobody else can save you. Step one, admit you're a sinner. Step two, be, be willing to turn from sin and repentance. Step three, believe that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried, and rose from the dead. Step four, through prayer, invite Jesus into your heart to become your personal Savior. What to pray? Dear God, thank you for showing me what you think about Catholicism. I also reject it. I accept Christ's sacrifice as perfect and complete. Please forgive me in Jesus' name. I invite Jesus Christ to come into my heart, and I place my trust in him alone for my salvation. Thank you for giving me eternal life right now.